this would be an interesting video as someone who has a father who's an ESFP, who has dated ESFPs and who's had friends that were ESFPs. I think I know a lot about ESFPs. They're incredible, but for an INFP partnership long-term, no, I would not advise having an ESFP as a long-term romantic partner. Even having them as a friend is a bit much if they're gonna be your lifehood or lifespan friend. I don't know how to put that, but here's why. ESFPs are amazing. Everybody loves them. I can relate. My father is an amazing person. Oh my gosh. As my father, he is so incredible, so loving. He loves people. He loves attention. He never gets tired. He thrives on being around people all the time. He's incredibly sensitive. I mean, there's just so much to love with him. However, my dad is basically like a golden retriever. You know those, <laughs> those stupid memes where they put each of the personality types? If you were to pick an animal to be an ESFP, it would be a dolphin or a golden retriever. One of those things that are always, remember like always eager to please always want to be around people loves everybody everybody loves them that's that's what an ESFP is for an INFP uh if you're partnering up with an ESFP that can be very draining after a while I've dated ESFPs before and let me tell you for us or at least for me personally as an INFP I have extroverted sensing that means I love new experiences I love adventures I love being observant I mean spontaneity that's that's my thing I I love that stuff we don't thrive on routine everything being the same we usually like new experiences now what I don't like though is the social situations where I'm forced into that that's not fun but if it's of my own doing or something that I am choosing to go along with I will love that and ESFPs really do that for you they're extremely romantic they're always eager to please and eager to have those experiences as well so they will go out and also seek new experiences. They have to always have something new and exciting. They always want to go on adventures and that can make them come off as very unstable and annoying at times. But for a friend or somebody who you're dating and you just want to have fun, leave it to the SFP. They will always find something to do. They know how to have fun. Let me tell you, my dad is always going out. He's always making friends. He's completely friendly with everyone. Every time you turn around, everyone loves my dad. Someone's always talking about my dad, how great he is, how fun he is. I mean, just to put it into perspective, my parents are now separated and um my dad for the longest while was paired with my mom who's an INFJ she's also very dysfunctional very manipulative and I don't want to say boring but she is compared to him very boring very square very hoity-toity I mean you, you probably know what I'm talking about uh, living with her was and she even was aware of it she's like I don't know how to have fun I wouldn't know the first thing you know she's not as lovey-dovey I've seen situations where my dad will hug and he just wants to kiss her and hug her and love her all the time and she's like get off me I don't want that and it's not her fault this is just how she is. It gets annoying after a while. And I even found myself getting a little bit annoyed at that too. Like if my INTJ, funny enough, he's very, very, very loving, like very loving. And I love being loving too. But we're like cats. <laughs> I know it's so funny when people point that out, but it really does feel like that. And there are times when he comes up to me and he kisses me and he just keeps kissing me. And I'm like, and it feels good. I love the love. But then after a while, you're like, okay, stop. Leave me alone. Stop. Why are you overdoing this? And it gets really annoying. I don't I don't ever say that to him, but I kind of like, Ugh, you know, try not to lose control because then that part of my brain starts to get too overloaded. And that's how INFPs feel. If you're romantically paired with an ESFP, they want to be around you all the time. And it's like, it will drive you insane. I've also met other couples, INFPs, who are paired with ESFPs. They don't last. They last a few years, maybe five, seven years, and then the ESFPs drive the INFPs insane. And the ESFPs are also driven insane because they don't understand why the INFPs need space from them. It's just ridiculous. They're like, they need space. I must help them. <laughs> I must, they must be in a funk. I must find them something to do. They don't get the concept of needing space. I remember when I was living with my parents and my dad would always knock on my door just as a joke. You know, we always play around. Me and my dad always play around. We physically play around with each other we rough house we even tickle like he's super loving he's a great dad and there were times when I had to record I just go to my room and he'll go and he'll knock on my door like doo, 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 doo. meow and he'll just make these weird noises and we make those noises all the time anyway but when I'm in the middle of working I'd be like daddy I'm working he doesn't like he'll he's like okay they'll come back five minutes <laughs> Five minutes later, knock, 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 meow. I'm like, oh my fucking God. And then you have to be mean with them for them to get it. And I'm, 
this is how this is how ridiculous my dad is sometimes. He's hilarious. So I'm I, I had to yell at my like, daddy. I, I need to be alone. I can't. I, I'm overloaded. There's too many people. And he's like, you and your mom are weird. Like, why do you need to be alone? Like, he just doesn't get it. He does not get the concept of needing space. He gets depressed if he's not around people. So anyway, he goes downstairs. And then a few days later, he knows I told him like someone's supposed to be coming to the house. And it's very important. And I think it was for, for some interview or something important. I don't remember what it was. But then I asked him later on, hey, dad, did someone stop by? They were supposed to stop by and, and you know, for something important. <laughs> well, he said, well, you said you don't want anyone bothering you when you're recording. So I sent them away. I'm like, what? <laughs> That's the one thing you're not supposed to say. What kind of sense does that? I said, you know what? <laughs> let me, let me, let me calm down. <laughs> like imagine if you have an important package, right? And you have to sign for it. And this is just, this was the kind of importance it was. It wasn't that, but this was on the level of importance. And you need to sign for the package. The person who put in that they need to be there to sign package. No one can sign for them. You need to present your identity and say, hey, I am this person. And imagine you telling your, your father, hey, don't bother me when I'm recording. When you see that bear on my door, it means I'm recording, don't bother me. Uh, and then you know. And then the person comes and he's like, oh, that's an important package that my daughter needs to sign and she needs to be here physically to sign it nah i can't you know because she's recording and she said no one's to bother her <laughs> so the person with the package is like okay and they walk away with the package and then i have to go and drive an hour and go pick it up this is the kind of like <laughs> it's like really daddy really <laughs> But, you know, I love my dad and, you know, hanging out with him now that I'm older and I've moved out, I'm okay with calling him every day. Like, he's my father. And I think it's different with other ESFPs because I don't really find myself wanting to reach out to other ESFPs because if you make that mistake with a friend and you reach out to them, they will never leave you alone. That's like an invitation and they will never leave you alone. I'm telling you, like golden retrievers. But my dad, you know, he's fine. He's a girlfriend now. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. You know how many women wanted my dad when he was married? My mother would complain about him, how he's so loving and he's always kissing and he's always doing this and he's too caring and it was annoying. And all the women at her job were like, what is wrong with you? I would die to have a partner like that. I want that. And she's like, well, I don't want to, he always wants me to get up and do this and do that. And as an INFJ, I don't know what it is with INFJs. I found this is a common trait with them, but my mom is really bad. She has this covert narcissistic tendency. I think she's a covert narcissist. I'm pretty sure she is. And sorry for the traffic noises that's why i want to move out of here and go to the country um but she will sit there and complain about something humble brag that's what it's called she'll humble brag about something and make it seem like it's the worst thing in the world and maybe she is doing it because she really feels that way but she also knows that other people will be like i want that and she will she'll be the kind of person who'll be like oh this whole thing oh please i just had that in my closet she's that kind of person and for some reason infps can sense that and it's fake as fuck and it just makes us like gag like ugh, like gross like how are you oh gross not even like yeah he is very caring like i'm not gonna bad mouth my partner to anyone like i'll admit okay it is a little bit overloading but the way she complained about him like you know he's this and he's that and you guys don't have to live with him and she's right it's different when you have to live with someone but how are you gonna be complaining to other people about your partner loving on you. That's so weird, but whatever. So ESFPs are very, very loving. And if you do try to tell them, one thing I, I, I do notice about them too, having seen my mom's and my dad's relationship is if she tells him she doesn't like something, but it doesn't make sense to him, he won't take it as seriously. ESFPs tend to live in the here and now. Like they don't see pet past, present or future. And if something, if they do something, they cannot, they don't have the intuition like INFJs do, or even INTJs at some point, or INFPs or ENFPs to sense when somebody is hurting like they know when someone's hurting but if for example my mom is like for her she's like it really makes me upset when you leave your stuff all over the place or you go behind after i've cleaned up something and dirtied it and i completely understand that or another one my father would do this very annoying thing where if you leave something in the fridge and it's yours he'll eat it in his family that was just something you know like i guess we thought that it's just something that they did but my mother trained us that if someone puts something in there and it's not yours do not eat it it doesn't matter if you're in the same family or not my dad would always eat her stuff so he does not get the concept even when we complain to him he doesn't think it's a big deal until it happens to him and then we're like that's what you did to us that's how it feels esfps have to have an experience happen to them for 
for them to be empathetic. They don't get it. They can cry with you or not cry with you, but they know how to comfort you and bring you out of that funk, but they don't do it in the way that you expect them to. An ESFP will hug you, but they'll feel very awkward. They don't like sadness. So if like for an INFP, if someone's crying, as long as you're not crying all the time, if you if that's your MO and you're like constantly negative, then we'll stay away from you. But if you're crying and you're in a need of comfort, INFPs will actually cry with you or will laugh because it's awkward. I've had those situations, that's for another video, but but we know how to be cry with someone. I've had that happen where I can feel the pain on other people, especially if I really love them and I know them and will comfort you. The ESFP will hug you and say, I'm sorry. Hey, let's go get some cake. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go go do this. <laughs> They, 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 sitting in one spot while you're sad, that drives them nuts. <laughs> They're like, don't like this feeling. It's very awkward. I don't know what to do. Hey, let's go have some fun. Let's take your mind off it. <laughs> And they're really good for that. And I do love that about them. But sometimes, sometimes you just want someone to listen. And ESFPs can be that, but they don't like doing that. Like I remember, and if it doesn't make sense as well, they're just like, oh, please. And I remember when Steve Irwin died and I really liked Steve Irwin. When I discovered him, I really, really, really liked Steve Irwin. He loved animals and I used to watch him all the time. And then I discovered what happened that he died and I cried. I actually cried. That's the first time, wow, I actually ever cried for a celebrity. And I went went down to my dad and I said, daddy, daddy. And he's like, what's the matter? <laughs> and he was so concerned. <laughs> and then I'm like, daddy, Steve Irwin's dead. And he pushed me off and he started laughing. He's like, oh, please. <laughs> And it was so insensitive and I was and I was so hurt because I was so vulnerable in that moment and it just made me so angry at him. I'm like, how are you gonna laugh at me crying? But to him, I can understand now from his perspective, it's ridiculous. He thought it was actually something serious. Like, is there something wrong with you? You're crying because someone who you don't know and never met is dead. Okay, please give, give, give me a break. <laughs> And that was his thing. So he started laughing because it was hilarious to him because it's just, it's just weird. So I called my mother and told her, I said, my dad, daddy laughed at me. She's like, I'm so sorry. I know how you feel. Your dad can be so insensitive sometimes. <laughs> And my mom actually comforted me because she gets that type of emotion. So if you're looking for someone to be emotionally comforting to you mm, as an ENF, as an INFP or an INFJ or even an INTJ, might not be the best pairing. Might not be the best pairing. So I hope this laid out for you. I mean, there's more I want to say, but I don't want to make this video too long. Uh, but e ESFPs are amazing. They're amazing with adventures. I personally don't want to be around them 24-7. It would drive me insane. And the only reason why my dad was tolerable is because he's an accountant and he's able to do work and do other stuff, you know, being the here and now and he watches TV shows. So he has something to, 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 to hold him. If he has something to hold his attention, he'll be fine. I know when my dad gets older, I don't mind taking care of him because it's not hard to, ple to please my dad. He doesn't want to be alone for long periods of time. When he separated from my mom, he was, he was so, you know, it was a long thing and it didn't take long for someone to grab him up. <laughs> like, that's the other thing. ESFPs never stay alone very long, especially if you're a attractive they don't stay alone very long everyone my dad's handsome you know and so so every woman suit us i mean and then he, he's not gonna sit there and be alone for long periods of time either if his uh if mom had died and they were still together or if he has a partner and they died it's not that he's disrespectful he literally cannot be the depression would kill him he actually called me crying they're also very sensitive in tune with their emotions they're not afraid to cry in front of you um my dad actually cried he called me and, and i called him back and i said what's the matter daddy and he said, you know, I just miss you guys so much. This is the first Christmas that I'm not with you kids. And as a family, because, you know, we're split up. We're adults. We moved out now. But, you know, it's it's weird for him. He's always, I've always been with my dad. Even when I went back to my country for eight years, I was living with my dad. My mom sent me back down there shortly after she brought me to the States and sent me back down. My dad, they were married, but she decided to go up to America to make a better life for us. That was what she said. Um, I don't know how much about that true as true because I'm learning a lot realizing that my mom lied about a lot of things, kept them secret and condemned other people for those same things, but she also did those same things. I don't know if that's an INFJ thing. I know they're very proud and they don't like to be vulnerable or people seeing them at their worst. So they put on like they're better than they are. And it's a nice trait, especially if they're taking care of people or if they're a leader of taking the burden for everyone. But for a dysfunctional INFJ, it's very toxic as hell. So I don't know, but she left my dad for eight years. He had a girlfriend down in our country. I mean, what do you want him to do? 
do. She had a boyfriend in America. See, don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the hell's going on with that. But I was, I lived with him for all that time. And thank goodness he's the one I lived with. Oh my gosh. I think I would have gone nuts or I would have been very dysfunctional had I grown up and had that foundation with my mother. And I, I don't mean that to like shit talk her. I'm just telling the truth. When we did have to come up to America and I did live with her, I was 11. I was going on 13. No, sorry. I was going on tw um, 12 or 11. No, I was 10 going on 11. Sorry. I was 10 going on 11. And this is around the time when I had visited her in America at one point earlier that I had realized my mom's not a nice person. It's just she disciplines and I don't, I don't have anything against discipline. I had corporal punishment growing up. I don't find anything wrong with that because it's my culture, but it's the way she did it. It's not, and it wasn't even the corporal punishment. That wasn't the issue. It was the mind games and the manipulation she did after. And that weird, that, that war on the whole family. So after we moved up and everything, then we're like, mm, yeah, something's, something's not right. And I felt it and my father also felt it, but he stayed because he got was familiar. He knew her. And so one of the greatest things about being in that household at the time was my father. My father was this bright light for me. Even when everything was horrible, even when she manipulated him into trying to treat me badly. When she wasn't around or for the most part, it was him and me. And then the thing also I have, I have to say about ISF, uh, ESFPs is if you are a domineering person, ESFPs are usually followers. They want to fit in. They don't want confrontation. So my father would let my mother lead and to our detriment. And if he did try to speak up, like if he realized she was being harsh with us and he was like, no, you can't treat the kids like that. And he actually spoke up with her those few times. She punished him for it. She withdrew from him. She didn't talk to him for days. Didn't give him sex for days. Like she would use that as a punishment. I'm telling you, like it was really horrible. And I think that an INFJ and an ESFP, just based on what I've seen and knowing my mother's personality, I know a lot of it is because she was abused and then she ended up abusing us. A lot of that is mental issues with her. But at her base personality, personality from what I can see not the best pairing not the best pairing maybe at first it's nice and cute but then after for long periods of time the INFJ will start to grade on the ESFP those little wings that the ESFP has the INFJ will clip them over time and but they won't clip them at once they'll start to clip them very steadily until years later you realize you have no wings at all and now you're trapped I know it sounds horrible but I'm just I'm being honest from my perspective INFPs and ESFPs get along very well but when it comes to adulting if we didn't have bills and money and all this stuff and we just all lived in the wild INFPs and ESFPs would work wonderfully if we were still cavemen beautiful pairing but when it comes to responsibilities and situations that require you to be responsible and reliable ESFPs are good providers they will they will be there for you my dad everything that he's ever done he's taken the clothes off his back metaphorically and given it to us before he gives himself something however and I know he hates me saying this he's not the best manager of money I know it's ironic being an accountant because he helps other people save money and gives great advice to them. But when it comes to him, he's literally told me that if he has cash on him, he'll spend it. That's the other thing with ESFPs. They, they are here and now. They don't think long-term. They don't plan long-term. INFPs, you know how we are. We are, we, we are labeled as paranoid because we see everything. We're like, if this should happen, I don't want this to happen. I'm going to prepare for this. I'm going to prepare for this. We almost seem like preppers, like crazy preppers is the way that we, we think. We think long term. We think about how is this going to affect me later? Because we're so hyper imaginative and super intuitive, we don't just think about, hey, let's just, let's just leap across the roof. We think about, hmm, I can see myself falling in 16 other universes and how that would end. I, I think about that while I'm driving. In my, it's so annoying. Like I will final destination myself in my mind while I'm driving. Hmm, in some alternate universe, I crashed there and died. Hmm, what if this happened? And that's always what we're thinking 24 seven. We have to like shake our heads to get out of that, that mindset, but we're always thinking of that. And so those thoughts can clash with an INFP or an INFJ that's planning towards something and an ESFP who doesn't like planning and just literally does things on the fly that can become very annoying. Also, surprises when ESFPs are romantic and they surprise you with something it feels great but when they're constantly like hey I booked a social thing for us and you're like I don't want to go like I didn't have you have to warn us ahead of time INFPs like spontaneity but we also like structure with it we don't like to just up if we're in the middle of processing or doing something 
I don't want you to come in unannounced without any warning and be like, hey, let's go here. And I'm like, no, I have things to do. You didn't ask. I didn't have any. And that's just a thing all the time. Once in a while, it's cute. And if we're going on adventures, we're like, hey, let's go off the, let's go off the path, which you're not supposed to do, horror movie 101. But we'll be like, yeah, let's do it. But when we're already doing something and we don't, we've already set our mind to something and then someone try, tries to throw a wrench in that, that's very annoying to us. And ESFPs do that all the time. ESFPs though, do like to make the people they love very happy. I will say that one of the things that I will never forget that my daddy has done for me is on my ninth birthday, I was, and I swear this is the last story. On my ninth birthday, I invited people. I went to a prep school and everyone there was rich, like rich, rich. I mean, you know how people have pools in their backyard sometimes? Well, all the other kids at my school, the parties that I went to, they had two huge figure eight pools too. You don't just need one pool, you have two and they're gigantic. They had mansions, they had like eight cars. I mean, all the kids at my school were like super rich and their parents. Me and my dad, we were middle class. And in my country, we have social prejudice. We don't have racism like they do in America, but we have social prejudice. So it doesn't matter what color you are, Chinese, European, doesn't matter. If you're not making as much money as them, um, they look down on you. And I, the kids bullied me. <laughs> I was the middle class student. We weren't even poor, we were just middle class. And we were treated as though we were poor, like scum. All the other parents hung out with each other. They didn't talk to my dad. My dad just worked at some television company and we were we were making okay money. Like upper middle class was basically what we were. We hired a nanny, the live in nanny. I mean, we had money. We just didn't have their kind of money. And because of that, we were treated badly. And my dad is the kind of person also as an ESFP, if people are mean to him, he's like, yeah, okay, whatever. And he just won't be friends with those people. He, d he gets along with everybody. But if you mistreat him, he doesn't want to be friends with you. He's not gonna sit down there and let you, you, you do that to him, even though he let my mom do that for him, but he was, you know, she was his wife. Trap kind of situation. Anyways, I set that up because whenever they had parties, they would invite everyone and they expect everyone to come because they need numbers. When I invited everyone to my ninth birthday party, I'm telling you, nobody came, even my best friend, nobody came. And yes, my best friend was rich as well. Not as rich as them, but she was richer than us. My dog. So I sat down there in my princess dress. My cake was lit. My nanny was there. My cousin was there. My dad was there. And I heard thunder rolling in the distance. I can remember it. Every time INFPs have an emotional experience, they remember it in perfect detail. It was a blue princess dress and it was itchy. It's one of those dresses that you had like their costumes and their mesh. And I'm just sitting there waiting and thunder's rolling in the distance as though it's mimicking my mood. And then I just started crying. And it's not because, that's not why, I didn't cry because nobody showed up because I want friends. It's not why I cried. Even at that young age, I cried because I understood that I wasn't valued. I came to their party to support them, not because I wanted to go, but because they expected people to be there to show up at their party. And not one person, even my best friend, showed up or even called and said they couldn't make it. Not one. It's like they all collectively agreed because they were prejudiced against us for being lower class than them to come to our house. They probably knew what our address was and they're like, ugh, we're not going there. We lived in a very quaint condo. It was very beautiful, honestly. There's a huge meadow in the middle and there were all these condo apartments just around and they're not like, it's like townhouses, but they're prettier than the ones here in the States. I think it was very pretty. They had all these, we, we lived in what looked like a courtyard garden. It was beautiful and there was a gully nearby. So we lived in a dead end area and there was this big, meadow in the middle like all the little condo apartments were just around that meadow and a huge meadow in the middle and there were just plants and flowering uh, plants everywhere it's gorgeous not as gorgeous as their mansions so nobody came and my dad I think my dad knew at the time what it was I think he knew and he oh my god I'm tearing up just thinking about it because I'm, I'm reliving it I remember he came around and I started crying and and I think he knew I was gonna cry because I was very sad and I was I was felt so hurt. And he came around and he kneeled in front of me and he hugged me and he said, "Don't worry, princess. Don't worry, my love." He said, "I promise you, your next birthday is gonna be the best birthday you ever had. I promise." And he hugged me and. <laughs> That is such a wonderful memory. I know that when my dad is finally gone, all, he gave me so many memories. I think I only have one really good memory of my mother and all the rest I can remember were just heartbreak. But my dad has given me so many good memories. Like now that he's older, he's not an old man, you know, he's still young enough. But if my mom dies, 
I'll be sad because she's my mother, but I'll move on. I know I'm not gonna, it's not gonna destroy me. It's it's just the thing with INFPs, once you've ruined that trust with them and you've broken that foundation, that relationship, they don't love you like that. Like she's my mom and I know I have to love her because she's my mother, but because of how she treated me growing up, there's a disconnect there. The disconnect is so palpable that if she was not my mom, I would never speak to her again, especially after everything she's done. She provided for us, she fed us, she worked hard to make sure we were fed, but I don't know how much of that was pride or obligation. So with my dad, he was my dad. He was my father. I don't love anybody the way I love my dad. And you know what? My 10th birthday, still to this day, best birthday I ever had. And I just, just looking back at it now, he didn't invite any of those stupid rich assholes. Not one of them. He did invite my best friend. She, he's the only one she'd invite because she was my best friend. I loved her. And I don't even hold it against her that she didn't come. She, I think my best friend has bipolar or something. She's an extrovert. She definitely wants people. She, she was the kind of person that I think I've talked about her before where if they're like come come play with us she sees us she's they, the people see us playing together they would take her away from me and she's easily led around she's kind of simple like that but she was the only one he invited and I think he purposely didn't invite those people now looking back at it I, I think that's what happened <laughs> He was like, you bitches didn't show up for my birth, for my daughter's birthday party and we showed up for yours. I'm not inviting any of you to this. And he got like this DJ. He got a bounce of bounce. I got to drink Tia Maria. Oh, Tia Maria. Oh my God. I, I That was my favorite thing. I just saw the girls drinking it and I'm like, I want to drink that for my birthday. And everything I ever wanted, that was the first time I used to go over to my best friend's house all the time, but she had never gone over to my house. And we knew each other from nursery. From before we were even in kindergarten, we knew each other. So we've been friends since we were babies and she's never been to my house. And I, I always am the one sleeping over at her house. This was the first time she ever came to my house. And <laughs> when she should like, everything was already so good. My dad threw the best party, oh my, and all of our church people, that's who he invited, all the people from his work, he got his work people, he got his friends and their kids, he got the people at church, he got some other people I didn't know and their kids, I don't know what my dad said to people, but man, <laughs> my daddy, he went overboard, he was like, mm -mm. <laughs> I was surrounded by people who knew me and loved me and I was so happy. And then when I saw my best friend show up at the door, oh my God, that was the ice. That was the icing on the cake for me. I was like, oh my God, you don't understand what it felt like. And because of the action, because my dad made that promise and he kept that promise and he saw how sad I was and it just meant the world to him. He, he remembered because he also remembers when you heard an ESFP, they remember that. They remember that. They don't hold grudges with people, but they remember people just like they can remember people's names. They were, they, they're very people oriented and they make you feel like you're, you're there, like you're important. When you're in a group, the ESFP will address everyone and just like how they remember everyone they also remember when you hurt them so he and ESFP parents of, of, of I know of also ESFP parents love their kids so, like if someone else hurts their kids they have something against that person and that's how my dad was so and I have to ask him I have to ask like dad did you purposely not invite those people on my 10th birthday because they they didn't come to the ninth one I have to ask him that he'll remember because whenever something emotional happens to them they also remember it but it was the best, best social experience I've ever had. I will never forget that. And I hope one day after I am long gone, my dad is gone, when I'm old and I'm long gone, I hope that the story of my father will still live on because I could not ask for a better father. If I had it to do again, I would ask for a different mom or I'd ask that my mom had taken care of her mental issues and psychological issues from her abuse, but I would never ever choose another dad again. Like that, this is it for me, this is the best best father I think you could ever have. You know, other people will look at people's fathers like, man, I wish I had a dad like that. No, nope. everybody wish they had a dad like mine. <laughs> Like it's, I got so lucky with my father. I love him to pieces. I can go on and on about how cool my dad is and how loving he is and best person in the world. And that's why when people hurt him, and I think that's why I hold it against my mom as well. When you treat him badly, he does not, he's the last person who deserves something like that. So that's what I have to say about that. Video ended up being long. I know I said it was gonna be long and it ended up being long, I'm sorry. But I just, I start gushing. You know how we get emotional, we just start talking. But yeah, uh, dating an ESFP, it can be challenging, but I think it's easier if you're someone who's also an extrovert, who doesn't mind being around them all the time. Or you're an, uh, you're an introverted person who has a more 
extroverted emotional side. Having them as parents, best thing in the world. Having them as friends, really cool. Partners, if you're an INFP, very draining. And it, it financially, it would wear on you. It would wear on you uh, if you live off grid or you're somebody who lives in the wild, perfect. <laughs> Sounds stupid, but they're perfect for that. They're perfect as wild people. I don't think ESFPs were ever meant to live in a civilized world. And it sounds strange me saying that, but I hope you understand what I mean. I know for the INTJs, they're probably it's gonna R slash whoosh over their head, but they their personalities seem to be perfect for not being tied down to anything. Having a partner they can share things with and share new experiences with and to be excited with. But just know, just like my dad and a lot of ESFPs, if you're not giving them what they need, if you're holding them back, they will they will find they'll find someone else. They'll stay with you because they love you, but. Mm, they're, that's why I say a lot, a lot of ESFPs have the propensity to cheat, especially if they're younger and immature because they live in the moment. And if they're not getting, if something is not meaningful to them emotionally, out of sight, out of mind. If you're someone who they are in love with and they love you, then they'll remember you. But if you're the kind of person who's boring, it's like, ugh, I don't like that person anyway. They don't treat me right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, you know, this person's treating me right over here. They're gonna respond emotionally to their feelings. And that's the way they operate. So if you're someone who doesn't understand that and you're boring and you can't, you're not a good match for the SFP, it's not gonna work out. I hope that explanation in detail will help some of you understand that they're a lot of work, <laughs> but they carry a lot of the social end of things. It's just that if you're an introvert, if you're an INFP, falling in love with them is easy. Staying in love with them and being happy with them long term when you live in a situation where you have to rely on them to be responsible all the time, probably not the best pairing. See you in the next video.